Okay, so I determined that the substance that had 35% nitrogen, 5.05% hydrogen, and 59.96% oxygen had an empirical formula of N2H4O3. Now, if I'm told that the molar mass of this compound is 80.06 grams per mole, uh, that's the molecular mass, not the empirical mass, right? Remember the relationship? Uh, empirical mass to molecular mass? Yeah, it's like there's a, like a multiplier sometimes. That's right. So if I know the molecular mass is 80.06, so let's write that down here. My molecular mass is 80.06. Um, and I know my empirical formula is N2H4O3. So my empirical formula is N2H4O3. Well, there's a molecular formula and there's an empirical mass and there's a relationship between these, correct? Yeah, the molecular formula is, well, I don't know what it is, but it's, well, how do we go on? What you need to do is find the empirical mass, right? from this business, because the empirical formula, which gives the empirical mass, uh, relates to the molecular mass, just the way the empirical formula relates to the molecular formula. Did we say that right? Well, I don't think so. Okay, but you get the idea, right? Yeah, I got it. So, what's our empirical mass? So it's 14 times two, so that's 28 plus 46 plus four. So 48 plus? Not 48, 28. Oh, 28. That's for the two nitrogens? Yeah. Plus the 46. Oh, that's for the three oxygens? Yeah. Okay, plus 46. And then plus what? Four. Okay, so 78? Yeah, 78. Are you sure you did that right? No, I guess not. 16 and 16 is 32. That's 48, not 46. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, so 48 is for the oxygens, plus the 20. Eight for the uh, two nitrogens plus the four. So I'm getting 80 here for my empirical mass. Well, then the molecular formula is the same. Okay, so what did you find out? Well, the multiplier for there is one. All right, so the empirical mass is the same as the molecular mass, n equals one, that multiplier, right? So then that means the empirical formula is what? The same as the molecular formula. That's right, add to H4O3. Okay, good. All right, here's a good one for you guys to try at home. We're going to find the empirical formula from these percentage compositions, okay? So, take your time at home. Make sure you try hard. Then when you're done, we'll walk through it together. Okay, hopefully you took your chance to do it. What do we do with these percentages, Fred? Convert them to mass. You mean moles? Yeah, moles. Good. So I have 24.78, and I can say that that's grams. Why can I say that that's grams? Because you can just assume you have a 100 gram sample. That's right. So I have uh, grams of carbon, and I want to go from grams of carbon to where? Moles of carbon. Why do I want to go to moles of carbon? Because you're after the empirical formula. It's like C X H Y C L Z. C X H Y C L Z. Okay? Yeah, that's the empirical formula. And from these masses, I can go to moles and because that those are all mole ratios. So what is it? One mole, twelve grams? Yep. And then for hydrogen, uh two point zero seven nine grams of hydrogen goes to, uh, there's one gram of hydrogen for every one mole of hydrogen, right? Yeah. So that's, I know that one, 2.079 moles of hydrogen. This one, moles of carbon, 24.78. Does that sound like it's going to be 12, 2? A little bit more than 2. 24.78 divided by 12. So 2.065 or 2.07. And the chlorine, what do we do for the chlorine? 73.1 grams. Okay, so 73.14 grams of chlorine. And I go from grams of chlorine to moles of chlorine. What's that? So is that 35.4? So go right here, 35.45 grams of chlorine for every mole of chlorine.
Okay. Good luck. All right. Frame. Oh, there we go. So we got 34.45 grams of chlorine for every mole of chlorine. So I got 73.1 divided by 34.45. So I got 2.12 moles of chlorine. Whoops, moles of chlorine. All right, so now what? That's your X, Y, and Z. That is. That is those are my moles of these different components. So C, 2.07. H, 2.08. Uh, Cl, 2.12. Now what do I do? Divide by the simplest whole number ratio, or the smallest one. That's right. Divide by the smallest one. It looks like it's going to be a... Just C1, H1, CL1, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that's D. That's our answer, D. Very good. So CHCL is our uh, empirical formula. Okay, good stuff. Uh, so we found the empirical formula from that previous one. Now we're going to find the molecular formula given its molecular mass. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, there's a relationship between the empirical mass and the molecular mass, and the empirical formula and the molecular formula. That's right. So how do we identify that relationship? Um, we know the empirical mass, or we know the, we know the empirical formula. Okay, so empirical formula, what are we going to do with that? Um, and we know the empirical mass, we can get that. How do you get the empirical mass? Just the mass of the empirical formula. That's right. Nice, easy name, right? Empirical mass sounds like empirical formula. So the empirical mass is 12 plus 1 plus 35.45, right? Yeah, 48.45. 48.45 is the empirical mass. And we're told here that the molecular mass is 280.831. So if I should write that up here, right? Yeah, because the relationship is between the empirical mass and the molecular mass. Good. So 290.832. Um, and we can find our multiplier by doing what? By taking that 290 and dividing it into the 48.45. All right. So 290.832 divided by my 48.45. And that gives me uh, 6, n equals 6. Yeah, so that means that the empirical formula is it's A. The answer is A. Okay, so you meant the uh, molecular formula, right? Yeah, oh, sorry, the molecular formula. It goes from CHCl to C6H6Cl6 because my multiplier is the same. And I identified the multiplier by comparing the empirical mass and the molecular mass. Okay, good stuff. Fabulous job.